Hi folks, it's Owen from farparia.org. I thought I'd talk you through a battle report uh, for Battle Group. It's a game myself and Steve played a few nights ago. Uh, we played it using the Better Lucky Than Good Vassal module that I created recently, and it's available on the website, so if you go to farfarway.org, uh, there's a link on the left-hand side. So here's uh, Steve's list. Uh, so these are 400 points of, as you can see, British Armoured Division, uh, representing the 15th Scottish Division, uh, fighting uh, on the day of the 26th of June 1944 and uh, they're supported by some armour from the 31st Armoured Brigade. Uh, so Steve's list has a forward HQ comms relay team. Um, the reason for bringing them in and, and as well as the forward observer team was this was the first game we really wanted to try some uh, artillery support. Um, so we had a, an off-table artillery request so that didn't get used during the game really um, but it was really the three inch mortar that was uh, added as a support option as part of the motor infantry platoon. Um, so the bulk of the list are, is made up of, of that infantry platoon uh, mounted up in M5 half tracks and uh, also then a tank platoon with uh, two Cromwells and a Firefly. Um, the Bren Carrier was his reconnaissance uh, support unit and we were playing the attack counter uh, attack mission so the Bren Carrier was the only uh, unit to start on the board. For the Germans, then um, I also had a, a 400 point force. In fact, both of us were on 398 points and both of us had a 30 battle rating. Uh, so my one reconnaissance unit was a sniper and I had four Panzer IVs, so three in a platoon and uh, an additional one. I had a forward HQ mounted in a half track and then I had uh, unmounted Panzer Grenadiers, uh, so typical squads with their bipod uh, MGs and also a pack 40. Uh, I decided this time I'd bring a little bit of uh, supply, so I have a couple of medium trucks to help keep the ammunition uh, flowing for the, the Panzers. Uh, so that, they're the, the lists, and uh, i say the mission was attack, counter-attack, so no real advantage for either side. Uh, so let's talk about the game then. So here you can see the map. Um, it's based on the second scenario from the Two Fat Lardy Scottish Corridor campaign. Um, you can see my scout moved across the German scout up the field there, and the Brand Carrier uh, has moved down the road. You can also see the objectives there. There are four objectives. Um, none of them are currently claimed, um, but they will uh, be more or less claimed with the, the symbols that you can see. Uh, so early on, um, my armour started to come on. Um, so I'm juggling around a little bit to figure out where to deploy them. I also brought on the command squad for my platoon and the pack 40. Um, my tanks moved up, uh, took a couple of pot shots at the Bren carrier, but you know it was obscured uh, at a bit of a distance, so it was a hard shot, it moved. Um, so nothing much there, but tried to get the pack 40 moving so I'd have a good line of fire along that cobbled road uh, and started moving up towards the objectives with my infantry. Uh, so I grabbed this objective with the sniper um, and then it was onto Steve's turn with his uh, British coming along. So you can see him starting to deploy the tanks. There are two Cromwells and the Firefly, as well as a couple of half tracks um, with at least his mortar in it. Uh, he's probably possibly going to bring some um, observers down with those as well. Uh, so you can see him moving down the, the road here and he, he drops off uh, an infantry platoon. So they're somewhat smaller in size because they're um, mounted up. Uh, and they move into that building claiming that objective. Uh, so we're starting to pull our uh, counters, uh, but nothing too substantial at the moment. So again, onto the German turn, uh, I start to kind of get my units ready for deployment. Uh, you see another tank coming along, so, you know, decided to be pretty aggressive, get the armour out quickly. Um, put a couple of the tanks in ambush just in case the um, British did pop their heads around that corner and start to get kind of good lines of fire uh, as much as I could. And then I start to get some infantry moving. Uh, wanted to move up through that field um, just to start to threaten objectives uh, and get a, a little bit of board control. So you can see I have uh, a few infantry as well as uh, an MG moving across there. And then the tank that just deployed moving across. So I think both of us were reasonably lucky with our uh, orders most of the game. There were a couple of turns where we were a little bit low on orders. Um, but I think we've from previous games learned that if we can get your... Uh, platoon leaders and get your your forward your senior leaders onto the board. You you've got a chance of at least getting a few more orders. Uh, so again, Steve bringing on a, a few more toys up on the top. Uh, so half tracks. There's a Bren carrier. Um, and as I said at the in the intro, wanted to try a little bit of um, artillery here. So he he pops out a, 
an observer team uh, in the corner of that field uh, from the University of Cary that had come on earlier. Uh, and then he brings down and drops out, uh, I think his three inch mortar pretty soon will be coming out. Uh, and start to get those infantry moving towards the slightly smaller building in front. So uh, my sniper in the field was going to end up in a, a little bit of trouble there. Um, something quite substantial then, one of the Cromwells popped its head around the corner, took a lucky shot and with a single shot I took out the Panzer IV at the very bottom there so you can see it's a, it's a smoking hulk. Um, so that certainly put me on the back foot slightly. Um, but I was still in good position, I mean the British were starting to get a little bit clogged up coming down that road. Uh, so I, I wasn't overly worried. Uh, worth noting that Steve had placed two observers in the building that has the objective marker on it, uh, and they would be dropping quite a bit of artillery down uh, from the tree inch mortar, which isn't quite on the board yet. Uh, so a little bit of positioning for me, taking some shots where possible on that Cromwell that popped its head around the corner. Uh, nothing too substantial. Uh, I moved up my supply truck um, just to make sure I was able to supply um, my tank at the bottom there. And there's another supply truck on the board, and it would slowly make its way across to the others to make sure that they're keeping supplied. Um, yeah, my infantry moving through the field quite well. I thought the board positioning was quite good here. Um, but you'll see later on that Steve manages to bring his half tracks at speed up through that orchard on the top and pop out infantry. So all of a sudden, my guys in the field do come under threat. Um, so here's the three inch mortar uh, arriving on the board after being dropped off by the Bren carrier. And our first attempt at doing artillery here, we, we certainly messed up a couple of things, um, but we did eventually get it right. So that dice is being used to represent the aim point and then eventually where it landed. And this is us trying to calculate um, hits and um, various different things on, on the units, but we, but we, we miscalculated. And, and the net effect, even though we were being a little bit too generous to the artillery, is that nothing happened, so it was okay. Um, so here you can see one of the half tracks moving up through the field um, and dropping out a, a, another squad. So this squad moves across, um, assaults that um, sniper and, and predictably takes him out. And again, the other half tracks moving down. So you can see the nice speed that Steve's getting, but still a bit of a traffic jam. You can see the firefly. <laughs> tentatively manoeuvring around things just to get a bit of a firing arc on the German tanks. Uh, takes a couple of shots but uh, isn't lucky. Um, in response uh, I hit it, I mobilize it and then I hit it again and destroy it so um, a lucky sequence of shots. Uh, my supply wagon moves in, starts uh, supplying. I now start focusing on pinning infantry when I can see them so whether with my MGs or with some HE just to start putting some pressure on Steve's guys moving through the fields or in that building. Uh, so you can see Steve's M5 moving across, dropping out more infantry. So there's now quite a lot of British infantry focusing around that central field. Uh, and my guys are starting, certainly starting to feel the pressure in that field on the right-hand side. Um, Steve pulled back then the Cromwell that had originally been at the corner. It had run out of AP rounds and brought another one in, um, hitting and pinning one of my tanks down the bottom. Meanwhile, a bit of positioning there, removing the pinning from his units, all the while drawing things. And again, I get a lucky hit. I uh, take a good shot with one of my, my Panzers and take out the Cromwell that had literally just moved to the corner. So, um, as Steve said, all of that AP ammo sitting inside that Cromwell's wasted, and while there's another one roaming around with no ammo. So, feeling the pressure, my infantry that were in the field decided to move out of it. Um, I pushed up the um, Pack 40 again, pushed up the infantry along the bottom. So I feel like I've reasonably good field position, and here we are doing a, a proper um, bit of artillery drop, uh, which causes two of my units to be pinned, and Steve moves down fairly aggressively with these units, preparing himself probably to assault my guys in the next turn. So that's something I'll have to pay attention to, is to clear that pinning, uh, otherwise I could be in trouble. Uh, so he's bringing the Cromwell across to give a little bit of HE uh, support, or a little bit of MG support um, as the infantry go in. And starting to move the Piet across. I mean, at this stage, it's it's one of the few anti-tank uh, elements I might have. And here's where I really start focusing on pinning. My tanks are pumping HG shots into buildings or MG shots into the infantry, the British infantry moving up. Uh, I just wanted to try and slow them down wherever possible. Uh, I'm moving up the bottom. Maybe I can put pressure on that observer across the road and put the pack 40 so it's pointing into the field. 
uh, just to try and put a little bit of pressure on anything that comes that way. Um, of course, they could try and assault it, but I have a lot of infantry backing it up if they do assault it. I mean, the infantry can go in afterwards. And I clear up uh, pinning, unfortunately, not as much as I wanted. Uh, I was quite unsuccessful. Um, and another good artillery shot from that 3-inch mortar in the British pinned the uh, pack 40, pinned some, pinned some infantry, and some infantry were already pinned. So quite a chunk of the German force is, is pinned here at the moment. And that unit in the field, you know, they could cause a little bit of trouble, um, particularly with the two things across the hedge being pinned. So in response, I pinned the infantry uh, across the wall with my tank, and then I start assaulting it. It really caused trouble for them. I took out one of the units, um, trying to get my MG into position. Uh, I also brought out my uh, senior leader, did some tactical coordination, got the pack 40 going, and it pinned the infantry in the field. So I'm starting to get into a decent position here, particularly if at the end of this turn I can unpin a couple of my units. We now have British in the open pinned, and albeit with the Cromwell coming up to give a bit of HE support possibly, um, but I'm hoping it's not going to get the, the opportunity. Um, Piat comes up, takes a shot, um, doesn't worry me too much, thankfully. Um, Steve attempted to uh, do another uh, artillery fire, but the uh, the initial shell landed too closely. Um, I take out the observer team, and now we're starting to do the assaults in the field. So I have two units uh, come in, assault those British that were in the field, taking them out. Move across, assault the Piat team, and that is the end of the game. Uh, so Steve had met his his uh, battle rating. So I have to say, uh, myself and Steve are really enjoying uh, playing Battle Group. It's uh, a very interesting game. Um, a lot of different bits of rules to get your head into, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to playing more games. Um, not sure what theatre uh, Steve has an interest in playing. Uh, early war, particularly Blitzkrieg, the attack into France. Um, I have an interest in kind of the mid-war battles in, in Russia. So um, this is a great tool set. I mean, lots of different uh, interesting units to deploy, lots of different forces to, to try out, and uh, lots of history to dip your head into just to try and understand what the events 75 plus years ago were like. Thanks for watching.